Welcome to Unit H. This is cell biology and cancer. Before we can talk about cancer, we need to make sure that we know the basics for cell biology. All living organisms on Earth are divided into microscopic pieces called cells. There are smaller pieces to cells that include proteins and organelles. Cells are small compartments that hold all of the biological equipment necessary to keep an organism alive and successful on Earth. A main purpose of a cell is to organize. Cells hold a variety of pieces and each cell has a different set of functions. There are many types of cells. Cells are unique to each type of organism. Humans may have hundreds of types of cells. Some cells are used to carry oxygen through the blood. These are red blood cells. And others might be specific to the heart. If you look at very simple organisms, you may discover cells that have no defined nucleus. Or there might be other cells that have hundreds of nuclei. They're called multinucleated. The thing that they all have in common is that they are the compartments surrounded by some type of membrane. We're going to go over just a few structures within the cell and what they do. Um, Let's look at the cell membrane and see how that membrane keeps all the pieces inside. When you think about a membrane, imagine it like a big plastic bag with some tiny holes. That bag holds all of the cell's pieces and fluids inside the cell and will keep any nasty things outside the cell. But there are some little holes in that, in that membrane to let some things move in and some things move out. Cytoplasm is the fluid that fills a cell. The cytoplasm has many different molecules that are dissolved in solution. <clears throat> You'll find enzymes, fatty acids, sugars, and amino acids that are used to keep the cell working. Waste products are also dissolved before they can be taken in by vacuoles and sent out of the cell. The cell nucleus acts like the brain of the cell. It helps control eating, movement, and reproduction. If it happens in a cell, chances are the nucleus knows about it. The nucleus is not always in the center of the cell. It will be a big dark spot somewhere in the middle of all the cytoplasm. You probably won't find it near the edge of a cell because that might be a dangerous place for the nucleus to be. If you don't remember, the cytoplasm is the fluid that fills the cells. There is a nuclear envelope. The nuclear envelope is a membrane similar to the cell membrane around the whole cell. There are pores and spaces for RNA and proteins to pass through, while the nuclear envelope keeps all of the chromatin and nucleolus inside. When the cell is in a resting state, there is something called chromatin in the nucleus. Chromatin is made up of DNA, RNA, and nuclear proteins. DNA and RNA are the nucleic acids inside the cell. When the cell is going to divide, the chromatin becomes very compact. It condenses. When the chromatin comes together, you can see the chromosomes. You will also find the nucleolus inside of the nucleus. When you look through a microscope, it looks like a nucleus inside the nucleus. It is made up of RNA and protein. It does not have much DNA at all. Chromosomes are the things that make organisms what they are. They carry all of the information used to help the, the cell grow, thrive, and reproduce. Chromosomes are made up of DNA. Segments of DNA in specific patterns are called genes. Your genes make you who you are. You will find the chromosomes and genetic material in the nucleus of the cell. <clears throat> chromosomes are not always visible. They usually sit around.
found uncoiled and as loose strands called chromatin. When it's time for the cell to reproduce, they condense and wrap up very, very tightly. The tightly wound DNA is the chromosome. Chromosomes look kind of like a long, limp, white hot dog. They are usually found in pairs. Scientists can uh, are Scientists count individual strands of chromosomes. They count individuals. Not every organism has pairs. You, you probably have 46 chromosomes, 23 pairs. Peas only have 12 pairs. A dog has 78. The number of chromosomes is not related to the intelligence or the complexity of the creature. There's actually a crawfish that has 200 chromosomes. Does that make that crawfish five times smarter or more complex than you? No. There are even organisms of the same species with different numbers of chromosomes. You will often find plants of the same species with multiple sets of chromosomes. Chromosomes work with other nucleic acids in the cell to build proteins and they help for the cell to divide. Every animal-like cell has two small organs called centrioles. They are there to help the cell when it comes time to divide. They are put to work in um, when the process of mitosis occurs. You will usually find them near the nucleus, but they cannot be seen when the cell is not dividing. Eventually, cells need to duplicate, um, and one way it can do it is through a process called mitosis. The big idea to remember is that mitosis is the simple duplication of a cell and all of its parts. It duplicates its DNA, and the two new cells, they're called daughter cells, D-A-U-G-H-T-E-R, daughter cells, have the same pieces and genetic code. Two identical copies come from one original. You start with one, and you get two that are exactly the same. Beyond the idea that two identical cells are created, there are certain steps in this process, and we have five basic phases in the life cycle of a cell. The first phase is interphase, I-N-T-E-R-P-H-A-S-E. -E. Second one, prophase, P-R-O-P-H-A-S-E. Third, metaphase, M-E-T-A-P-H-A-S-E. Fourth is anaphase, A-N-A-P-H-A-S-E. And the fifth one is telophase, T-E-L-O-P-H-A-S-E. I'm going to explain each phase to you. The first phase, or interphase, it, this is the normal state of a cell. It's its resting state. It's just going about its business of just surviving and making sure it has all the nutrients and energy it needs. Um, it also is getting ready for division. That will happen pretty soon. It's duplicating its nucleic acids so that when it's time for prophase, all the pieces will be there. The second one is prophase. A cell gets the idea that it's time to divide. First, it has to get everything ready. You need to duplicate DNA. It needs to get certain pieces in the right position. And generally, it prepares the cell for the process of um, meiotic division. The third phase, metaphase. Now all of the pieces are aligning themselves for the big split. The DNA lines up along the central axis, and the centrioles send out specialized tubules that connect to the DNA. The DNA, the chromatin, has now condensed into chromosomes. Two strands of a chromosome are connected at the center with something called a centromere. The tubules actually connect to the centromere and not the DNA. The fourth phase, anaphase, here we go. The separation actually starts to begin in this phase. Half of the chromosomes are pulled to one side of the cell and half go to the other. When the chromosomes get to the side of the cell, it's time to move on to telophase. Telophase, now this is where the division is finishing up. This is the time when the cell membrane closes in 
and it splits the cell into two pieces. You now have two separate cells, each with half of the original DNA. And then we start all over and we go to anaphase, or I mean, sorry, we go to interphase, where you have that resting phase until it starts all over again. That's the basics for cell biology. Um, you should have watched and written some notes. You summarize it and ask any questions that you may have. And I will see you in class.